Uh, let's start at Acts, the book of Acts chapter 20. The book, book of Acts chapter 20, you'll have to kind of scroll down to find that. Acts, the 20th chapter, verse 7. Acts 20, verse 7. Thank you again to those who just participated in my life in so many ways. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned yesterday to the kids, I don't fish. I'm not a fisherman. But when my grandson, since he was three years old, he, he's been possessed with fishing. And he comes down, and I'm fishing. Verlaine, good to see you, darling. You got some more bread back there? Yeah, give Verlaine a, a loaf of bread. I hadn't seen Verlie. Verlie, stand up. Verlie, stand up. Verlie, stand up. Verlene and her husband Jack were some of the first members of my church way back in the day. And uh, Jack passed away way too early. And Verlene's been in my life ever since. She lives up in Lufkin. So she comes down and checks on things. Good to have you here. Uh, I forgot where I was going now. I didn't expect to see you jump up on the bar like that. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, are you comfortable? Acts chapter 20. Oh, I was saying, I don't fish. That's what I was saying. But that grandson has a way of causing me to do things that I never dreamed I'd do. Now, we fish Sunday. Thank you, Henry. We fish Monday. We fish Tuesday. We fish Wednesday. We fish Thursday. And I, I mean, and I mean, we mow grass and do all kind of stuff. Of course, we had memorial services. I've had, I've done two memorial services this week, and in all of that, he still has a way of finding. If he can get an hour in, he'll count five fish in an hour. That's his. You know, he's he's going to get it in, and we're going to go fishing. And I thought about. What you know, my love for Jesus has caused me to do things I never dreamed I'd do. I mean, I'm doing things, I'm witnessing, I'm sharing, I'm staying up. I'm, you know, I may be a paw paw, but I do unpaw paw kind of things. I just feel like I'm always uh, working, uh, trying to get things um, done in my life and, and around the ranch. And uh, maybe I'm wearing out, but I'd rather wear out than just, uh, you know, sit down and pass away. I. I just like where uh, this earth suit's only good for here. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them. Ready to depart on the morrow, he continued his speech until midnight. I've never done that. I haven't. I ain't preached till midnight. That's a long time of preaching. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, it just, this doesn't give preachers permission, all right, to preach long. It don't do it. But he was preaching long, which tells me that because he was leaving, he was trying to get everything over to everybody. In other words, they weren't going to be another Sunday. I got, to, I got to share with you all this now. And while he was preaching, and like last night when I'm teaching, I, I, was, I was real mindful of this moment with little kids, you know, because they, they've been going all day. And so I, I was real brief last night and, and, so, uh, and, and, and it, with a squirt bottle. So it says here that Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep, and as, as uh, Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep. He fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Paul went down, fell on him, and embraced him. Everybody say embraced. And said, trouble not yourselves, for he still got life in him. Then he therefore was come up again. In other words, he revived, and he came up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till the break of day. So he didn't just preach till midnight. The, the, the crisis took place at midnight. He preached till the sun came up, and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. In other words, very excited. We'll get back to that. That's going to be our, our, our text. But when I read that, I thought about our kids. And this is what I've seen this week. Touch. 
I, I, I mean, I, I'm standing in the cafeteria, and they come up, and they just they got to get a hug. They got to get a touch. Yeah, uh, I'm on the tower. They hug me before I hook them up. Uh, I watch the, the kids reach and grab the counselor's hands, and, and they're touching them. And, and then it just dawned on me, we were created to connect. You know, I, one of my favorite new shows is a show called Alone where they stick these people out on islands in the Arctic all by themselves. But you realize real quick, we were not made for isolation. We don't like, uh, we've got to touch. We've got to connect. And they'll, they literally grown men, big bearded men, will start crying. They start talking about how they miss their wives and their children and people, even their dog. They'll start crying. Why? Because we were made to connect. We were made for touch. We were made. God gave us this ability. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord God, use it. Remind us. Give us the ability to reach out and touch one another and touch you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be uh, seated. The theme yesterday for camp was don't be afraid from now on. You're going to catch men. Don't get nervous about it. You've got to go out and spread the good news. You know, it is not the great suggestion. It's the great commandment. If I give you a commandment, I'm expecting you to do it. Jesus didn't suggest to us. You know, the, the Jehovah Witnesses took hold of it. The Mormons took hold of it. They go out and share. We look at it because we got grace. We got a pass. So we don't have to share the word. We can if we want to. But this is not a suggestion. If you're a believer, it's a commandment to go and share the word with people. Share what you know. Matthew 28 says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth. I've got the ability, I've got the power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, listen, I'm going to be with you always to the very end of the age. And the age, we're moving toward the end. We're, I, Jill and Levi were in my house as her boyfriend, and he said, Pastor, what do you think about them earthquakes in California? I said, well, I hate the fact that some people are getting injured, but I'm smiling. First off, I got issues with California. Come on. Love the people, but they got some politics out there that are messed up, and it seems to affect the rest of the country. You know what politics is? a Latin word. Poli means many. Tick is a blood-sucking creature. Many blood-sucking creatures, and that's they going to tax you to death out there. And you see that going on. And, but the earthquakes hit, and then next thing, the news switches to the tornadoes. Then it switches to the floods. And I'm thinking about the Scripture, that earthquakes in diverse places and all these things. To, we, we are speeding toward every day that passes. We're another day closer to heaven. Can I get an amen? As a person, uh, you know, in my life, I believe everybody can make a difference. Everybody can do something to change somebody else's life. And we've flown over the mission field. I'm telling you, we've, we've sent money to other places, and that's, I, that, I'm not against that. But the truth of the matter is, our mission field is here. You drove by it on your way to church. You drove by people that need to know Jesus on their way here. There's still people that don't know sick them from coming here about the gospel. I, I did a, a funeral yesterday, and I'm looking at people, and they looked at me like an old mule staring at a new gate. They had never heard anything I was saying, and, they, and it was like they were catching it. They were grasping it. They were understanding this thing that's going to take place, this transition from this life to the next life. And that's where I'm at in life. I just want to help people learn it and to get hold of it. When you understand that we need to connect, and, and reconnect with others. Look, when we break the current of contact, you lose your power. It is just a fact. The Scripture tells us in the book of John 15, remain in me and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, I'm going to be in him. And he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. I, I don't want to be a part of the branches that are thrown into the fire. I don't want to be burned. I want to remain in him. There's something about staying connected to him. Uh, again, I was on the tower the last two evenings. I had a lady that was just a little bit younger than me up there. And she got up there, and all of a sudden, her knees started shaking. There's something about being on the ground and looking up. There's nothing being up on top of that tower and looking down. 
And if you're a guest, we got a 40-foot tower out at the ranch with two 300-foot zip lines. And, 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 and all of a sudden, she started going, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then she stepped a little more, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then, and, then, and then she looked back at me, and she said, push me, Pastor. <laughs> and it just hit me that, yeah, I can do all things, but every now and then I need a touch. Can I get an amen? I just need a little assistance, a little help. The vital connection between source and product is so important. Everything our creator made needs to remain connected to where it came from in order to fulfill its original purpose. Dr trees have to stay connected to the soil. Fish have to stay connected to the water. Birds have to stay connected to the skies. We, his creation, have to stay connected to him. If we don't stay connected to him, we will shrivel up, die, and be no good. Therefore, when a plant dies, it does doesn't exist any longer in a form in which it can fulfill its purpose. It decays and turns back to the soil. When we cut off, we had a storm blow through just the other night. Man, it blew through. I literally thought I was dreaming. It was that loud. I got up and got my phone and looked and saw where it had passed on my weather app. And I knew then I wasn't dreaming. Went out and the ditch was full of water. I thought, where is I was at Thursday night, David. Man, it just it rocked through there. And I and, and the power went off. And so things was, had shifted in the house. It's not like when we are cut off from electricity, we stare at the coffee pot. <laughs> our flat screen TV with satellite that carries our important sports program. Uh, we see the DVD player, the silence of an AC unit. We stand there in the dark for a moment and think about all that power, potential, benefits, pleasure, untapped functions trapped in each of these little items that were filled with possibilities. But unless at that moment that it gets electricity, unless it stays connected to something that can give it power, it is useless. And in our lives, unless we get connected to that which gives us power, we are useless. We need touch. Can I get an amen? When we ourselves are detached from our source, things start going wrong in our life. We start losing identity and purpose and concept and worth and value and protection and maintenance and, and preservation, productivity, meaning of life goes out the window because we've lost connection. So we got to stay connected to him. Many of you came today to make sure that your connection was tight and good. Loose connection can... You ever watch that loose connection? Huh? You ever had something go off and on and you reach down to touch the wire and it's... Uh, uh, and every now and then I come to church to look at people and it's... Uh, uh, you know, you get worship going on. And it's, uh, uh, and one hand going up, one butt going down. Amen. This is... Uh, you, and you're trying to get your connection and what you're here for is to get your connection tight again. Sometimes you got to wrap a little tape around it. You got to work on it to make sure that it's stuck. Without the answer, life is nothing but an experiment. This is why mankind searches through space. I get this all the time. Pastor, don't you believe there's aliens out there in this galaxy with billions of stars? My answer is always the same. No. I think we are the, the diamond. We, we're the jewel. We, I, we out searching, spending billions of dollars, going all over the place. I'm talking about living on Mars. You can't even survive in Montana. We the foolish, but I mean, we, the smarter we get, the more stupid we act. And, and I see this going on and on. Listen, mankind is always searching for the answer. We're looking for our connection to the origin. And the scripture already told us what our connection to the origin was. Therefore, evolution is a damnable lie. Amen. Denying the existence of our true source. We're trying to go back and connect ourselves with a monkey. Touch is the first sense to develop in humans, and it may be the last to fade. It, you, we still reach out. I, I, I love the little stories of, of kids who decide to go to convalescent homes just to hug the elderly. And they reach out, and they want to be hugged. They want to be touched. They want to connect. It does something to them. When I watch the, uh, my grandkids, if they didn't touch me, I wouldn't like them. I just wouldn't like them. I got to have the hug. I got to have the touch. I got to have the good night. I got to have the good morning. There's just something about that hold. And I know they get older and stupid, but eventually they come back around. Can I get an amen? How many times have we wondered why the phone quit? Why this happened? It's, you know, and we, we stay, we, we understand connection. Don't tell me you don't. And you got that cell phone, you got a way to connect that thing. You scared to death that thing go drop below 50%. 
and start draining and dying on you. Experts have known for quite a while that the lack of touch or touch deprivation has a destructive effect on human beings. Decades of studies show on newborns and the elderly reaching back to the 30s have shown physical and mental suffering from a lack of touch. Even if all the other basic needs are met, touch deprivation has been said to be just as destructive to health as a lack of vitamin C. The dose of touch is as critical as getting kids the right exercise and diet. Parents feel that they have a better feeling for what their kids are needing and respond to, a better sense of their relationship with their child from the physical intimacy of touching. And we know it's great for growth. It, it helps with weight gain for premature babies, but full-term babies are also less fussy and less better. I, I've st sat on this front row now for years and with David and Tony's kids, and as soon as I have been, when he wants touch, he got to have touch. My boys were that way. They had to have touch. It, it, it affected them. Even now, when Judah comes in, he's bigger than I am. You come here, Dad. You know, he wraps some big arms around me and squeezes me. And, and I think, you know, this is funny. It's been since he's a little boy. It's always been about touch. The truth is, touch is necessary for survival. And you know I'm talking about uh, the, the, the proper touch, a proper connection. It's necessary. Research demonstrates that without it, a baby's growth is stunned. Animals become more aggressive and violent. Humans experience more anxiety. It is the power of imprinting. We've raised horses and, and brought horses up on our property. One of the first things when that colt is born, you ran out and you hold that colt. You touch that colt. You imprint yourself onto that so that colt never forgets you. My dog comes in the house. He, he, Coda, will, if there's food there, he ain't touching it. He wants touch first. He comes straight over to me, nose in my face, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, he, he, he's got to have it, he, you know, he, he's, got, uh, he's got a problem with his liquor, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, hey, amen, let's get back to our text, boy falls out the window, hits the floor, as far as we know, there's no life in him, he, Paul preached at midnight when the boy fell out, the boy's name was Eutychus, somebody said Eutychus too if you fell out the window. Amen. Easy to remember his name. Uh, he fell on him, which means to hold with affection, to press into, embracing, to take by enclosing altogether, to earnestly throw the arms around one. His purpose was to check him. And, and you know as I do, when we touch, we're checking. I, I have the blessing of checking hundreds of people every Sunday and shaking of hands, of embracing during the meet and greet. I, I'm not just doing that. I'm checking. And it's important to see how people are doing. And often you can tell during that time. The Message Bible says, Paul went down, stretched himself on him, hugged him hard, and said, no more crying, he said. There's life in him yet. In other words, to give him something, uh, to, to connect with him. Some just need a word. I understand that. Some folk, just, and they'll tell you, I ain't touchy-feely. I don't need a hug. Yeah, okay, you say whatever you want. But when the time's right, you will need one. But a lot of us just need a word, just a word. Just give me a word. But at this moment, this boy needed a little bit more than a word. No more crying. There's life in him. Matthew chapter 8, verse 13 says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, and here's the thing. I talked to you last week a little bit about Peter and his boat and how that Jesus used Peter's boat. Well, after he started connecting with Peter, now he's connected with Peter's family. And once you get connected with Jesus, you're connected with the family. And the family starts getting involved. So when Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. She got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities. He carried our diseases. So some of them he spoke to a disease that's left, but others he touched. So here is Peter's mother-in-law, and she's sick. And, and, and the Scripture says Jesus goes in and touches her, and she gets healed. Watch what she does. She gets up and waits on him. Uh-huh. You got it? Can I take your order? What do we call them people? Waiters. What are they doing? They're waiting on our order. So when God has touched you and you know it and you've been healed, your mind's getting right, your body's getting better, your spirit's been revived, then you need to get on your little mater d, your little concierge, 
That's a big word you never heard me say. I practiced it before I got here. <laughs> and you ask them, is there anything else? Is there anything you need? Can, what is your order? And then you take that order, and then you go somewhere to make sure that order is completed, and then you bring it back to them. There ain't nothing like seeing a waiter once. I don't want to see you once. As a matter of fact, my tip is connected to how many times I see you. Don't tell me it ain't. So when I'm waiting there for you, so the Scripture says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, They'll mount up with wings as eagles. So not only is the one that's there to get something, the waiter is going to get blessed. The waiter is going to get new strength. The waiter is going to mount up with wings as eagles. The waiter is going to run and not be weary. So they that wait on him, those that become waiters, amen, are going to get blessed by him. Amen. So when she got healed, she got up and had an appreciation. This is an amazing thing to me. Those who appreciate ministry, those who have been touched by ministry, those who have been touched by the hand of God, even through other people, have a deep appreciation for that ministry. I, I've always had that. I, I've got men and uh, women I know in my life who've been ministers to me. They've ministered to me. They've done something. And I will wait. I will do something. I will bless them. The best of my ability, I have a deep appreciation for them. A lot of those are the men women you see come into this place amen i appreciate have a, an appreciation for them touch is simply the need to be loved crisis and physical touch almost instinctively in a time of crisis we hug one another well it's because physical touch is a powerful communicator of love i've told you before that times where jesus touched the broken hearts he didn't talk to them he just touched them he was just there with them if I, can, if I can get near you and just touch you, hold you, help you through this moment, and we cannot always change an event, but we can survive it if we feel loved. I can't change every event, every pain, every hurt, and you can't change all of mine. But I can survive it if I know I got somebody there that will hold me every now and then or, or shake my hand. Or, you know, and, and, and I watch it. The ladies, the ladies are, they, they, they real huggers. The men are slappers. I mean, I mean, we're down at the ropes course where the guys go, that was good, swap, right across the back. That man at that moment feels loved. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get a good swap across the back or even on the backside, you know, you know, you feel loved at that moment, you know. It's just sweat flying, you know, it's just, that's just something wonderful. Words may mean little, but your touch will communicate you care. Amen. They, a crisis provides a unique opportunity to express love. Now, let me close with this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. His name is Jesus. Yeah, he's the son of God. Let us hold fast that which we've been professing, that which we've been confessing. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. There's a little twist in that scripture to remind us that he can be touched. He understands. Our, it's why he came, to touch our infirmities. But was in all points, he was tempted like as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. Everybody say boldly, boldly. Let's try it again. Everybody say boldly, boldly. Boldly. Uh, you, you, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Okay, okay, just, I just want you to say the word boldly, boldly. Okay? Say boldly, boldly. Boldly. This is why I'm your pastor. You need a little help. I just want you to say that word boldly. Okay? One more time, ready? Boldly. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I am not your answer. The one next to you is not your answer. They are your touch point. They are you maybe a connector to help pray with you and agree with you. But my answer lies in Jesus. That I can come boldly to the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. When I have a need, I'm, I'm gonna, I got to ask you. And I, I, on my way here, I talked with Pastor Mike. 
this was kind of a unique thing. My pastor, many of you love that big German man. He said, I, I've been doing stuff so much this week. Things have been going on. I don't even have a sermon this morning. And so I started sharing with him what I was going to preach. He said, hold on. He pulled off the side of the road. And I know what he was doing. He was taking notes. He said, now I got me something. He said, this is good. This is going to work this morning. And I, I started getting blessed. You know, anytime you can pour into your pastor and help him get a word, amen, for that moment, that's a good thing, especially if he'll admit it. Oh, that was a great moment. But for me, I can tell you that when I have a time of need in my life, I got to go to Jesus, and he will touch us. How does he do that? I, it's none of my business. But he has a way of touching me. He'll touch me in a service. I, I, I'll cry on the tower because something happened up there with those kids. I'll cry on my motorcycle. I can feel him touching me. I have nowhere else to go. I have friends in the hospital right now. Some probably even watching by, by phone. I'm telling you, I'm praying that Jesus will touch them. I'm not just throwing something out. I can't exhaust this. And this is what we were talking about, Pastor Mike. This subject I cannot exhaust. I could go to the woman with the issue of blood who touched the hem of his garment. I can talk about Jairus, his daughter, when Jesus touched her. All through Scripture where he touched the lepers. Amen. He was always touching. And when he would touch people, Jesus' ministry, according to the book of Acts, was in touching and telling. Sometimes he talked, sometimes he touched. But there's something about touch. I'll be honest, we can't live without it. We need it. And as I've gotten older, I realize how much more I need it. Amen. They, sometimes the kids don't realize it. They don't pick up on it yet. But, man, when you touch Papa and Mama, you get, you get around a friend and, and you let mama know that you really did appreciate her through all the hard times. You say, well, pastor, I, and here's our other problem. We almost think we can't live without the touch of certain people. Let the ones that are around you that are touching you appreciate them. Appreciate the ones that are willing to deal with you. Amen. That, that's, sometimes I may not get a touch from some of them out there. I'm not going to let it lick the red off my sucker. Amen. I'm, it's not going to rattle my little red, little red wagon. Amen. I'm, I'm still going to be able to handle but those that are around me. Back to the message. Met on Sunday to worship, to celebrate the Master's Supper. Paul addressed the congregation. His plan was to leave the first thing in the morning, but Paul talked on. He kept talking. Way past midnight, they end the meeting, well-lighted upper room. Young man named Eutychus, and I'm glad it gives us his name, sitting in an open window. As Paul went on and on, he fell asleep, toppled out of the third-story window. When they picked him up, there was no life that they felt in him. Paul went down, stretched himself on him. See, this is what I believe. I believe because Paul had been walking with Jesus, he asked the question, will he live? They don't tell us, I just know Paul. Will this boy live? Is that life in him? And the instruction was, touch him. Like I've touched, you touch him. And he goes down, and he began to put his arms around him. Amen. He hugged him hard. No more crying. Life in him. Then Paul got up and served the master's supper. Went on telling stories of the faith until dawn. On that note, they left Paul going one way, the congregation another, leading the boy off alive, full of life themselves. It wasn't about Eutychus. It was about Eutychus' mom and dad. It was about his friends, all the others. When Jesus touched Eutychus, he shifted everything in that whole family. When God touches one, he affects everyone. Stand with me if you would. Everything our Creator made needs to remain connected to where it came from and in order to fulfill its original purpose. He made us and he bought us. We were created to fulfill purpose here. I can only find out what that purpose is if I remain in the vine, if I stay connected. If I stay connected, and our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends, our family, all of them need to be touched. They need to be loved. This week, I was reminded of that as I saw all them little kids running and hugging and touching and slapping and, and grinning and all those things. It just hit me how much. And they have never heard this sermon. They don't understand it. It's just innate inside of them. God created them for connection. They've got to connect. Your kids get I know sometimes you want to push them aside. 
get on out of here. They just kind of hover underneath you. As soon as JJ come in this morning, she'd come over to want to hang out with Pastor Papa and sit and be just to be near. There's something in us. We're made for this. We're made for it. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Heaven, hear us. We need a touch. We need a touch from you. Those watching through the internet, they need a touch from you today. God, are, are there have been tragedies in this area. There have been hurts and pains. I've sat with people who have lost loved ones, even on the water. God, I pray in the name of Jesus for a touch from heaven. Some have been affected by diseases. God, we need a touch. Would you just take your hand if you need a touch and stretch it toward heaven right now? God, we ask you to touch our minds. Give us clarity. Strengthen us. Our touch points have been a little bit on the short. We've had a shortage, a short in, inside of our touch. God, we ask that you strengthen it and let the plug be tight. Connect us back with you. You are a divine healer. I cannot be healed outside of you. There's no other name given in heaven and earth that I can be healed, that my knees can be strengthened, my arms can be strengthened, my body can be strengthened except through you. Touch my spirit, God. Keep the fire alive. Keep us running after you. Lord, we run after you so we can touch you. Now, God, I thank you for that. Your grip don't slip. Your grip don't slip. Hold our hands. Move us through this life. We're encouraged about your return in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God a praise in here. Amen, amen, amen. Before you sit down, touch three people. Go reach over and touch them. Just touch them. Let's just touch your three people. Amen. Reach for them. Reach for them. Reach for them. There you go. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Our servant leaders coming up. We got folk on their traditional vacations going on this week. It'll be going on for the rest of the summer. We're aware of that. I hope you get a little vacation time, a little time to get away. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you're watching on HolyWild.tv. If you're giving on your phones, amen, there's a place on our app, or you can go to Holy Wild Ministries, amen, to do that. Cheryl has the, uh, the iPad also. She'll be in the back if you'd like to uh, give your offering that way. You're welcome to do that. If you need to tie the offering envelope, lift your hand. Amen. Our servant leaders are making their way to you. We're going to show you a little video at the end here for the, uh, the closing so you can kind of see what's going on out at the ranch. And again, they've been horseback riding. They've been swimming. They've been doing a lot of crazy things. Your faithfulness is so important in giving. We thank you for that. Uh, David, there's other announcements here. I'll let you come up and give that. They will close with the video. Again, if you'd like to come out at 1 o'clock today, we'd love to see you. Amen. You don't have to have a water gun. You can just stand there and get wet. Wet, wet. Yeah, I'm sure the kids would appreciate it. If you didn't bring a water gun, actually, they, they like easy targets. <laughs> well, July 7th, we got Lift Ladies Bible Study.